So season one of Overwatch 2 is finally coming to an end. Tomorrow will bring a new map, a new hero, balance changes, and a new battle pass. Which by the way, I'll be doing a battle pass giveaway for one lucky subscriber. You just gotta be subscribed, like the video, and comment down below. But at the start of the season, I made a video giving my opinion if I thought Overwatch 2 was worth it. So in today's video, let's talk about the great, the good, and not so good things about Overwatch. I want to start this off by saying I did not play Overwatch 1, so many of my thoughts are not going to include things that were or were not in Overwatch 1. So one of the first things that I liked about Season 1 was the gameplay. I come from a wide variety of different FPS shooters. All the way from Fortnite, Warzone, Apex, I even dabbled in some Valorant a little bit. But honestly, the only two games that I could say had some really good FPS gunplay for me was Apex and Overwatch. Both games are just very tracking heavy. I really enjoy the game when it has a high level of tracking. And Overwatch 2 does not fall short on that at all. Sure, they may have a few heroes in the game where you really just don't have to aim at all. I'm looking at you, more remains. But I would say the vast majority of heroes in this game require some level of aim. Not only that, but many fights are pretty predictable, but at the same time, very unique. In Apex, they do have heroes that have movement abilities. The difference is, is that each hero can also have this standalone movement text, like super gliding, wall bouncing, and etc. In Overwatch, there really is no movement text, which means that you know that the Winston is going to leap, you know that the Sojourn can slide jump, and you know that the Genji can dash, double jump, and wall climb. Virtually nothing that anyone does in this game movement wise should be unexpected. They may make a play that you didn't expect, but you should not know that they couldn't do this or that they weren't going to do this, etc. Now sure, yeah, if you played Apex, you might tell me that, you know, that's just a skill issue. But honestly, I kind of prefer it this way. There's a lot more things that you have to pay attention to, and if there was standalone movement text in this game, it'd be pretty complicated. Which also leads me to the pacing of each engagement. I think it's fair to say that battle royales were kind of the standard when it came to FPS games even just a year ago. It was really hard for new games to try to jump back into this market if it wasn't a battle royale and even the ones that tried many of them failed. Hell even Halo came back and that game flopped. In most battle royales you're going to have a degree of downtime where you're either looking for someone or looking for loot. In Overwatch it completely eliminates that. Another thing that is kind of a breath of fresh air for me is the devs are very vocal. I say this because when I played Fortnite, that is how the game started out. They would overall just kind of talk to us a lot more, let us know why they were doing certain things. And over time, that kind of slowed down. And don't even get me started on Apex because man, did they never even talk about anything that they were going to do. Overwatch, on the other hand, has created multiple different blog posts and let us know where they want to take the game in the future. Admittedly, this could be because the game is new and they're trying to appeal to players to let them know where they plan on just taking the game in general. But I gotta say, if they keep at this pattern, I think it looks good on them. Another thing that I really enjoy about Overwatch is their battle pass. Something I can firmly say is that Overwatch has the best battle pass out of any game that I've played that has one. The amount of effort that they put into those skins and the amount of value that you get from those skins is honestly great. The only downside is that they don't give you enough currency to buy the next battle pass like most games do. For me, that isn't a deal breaker. Now to a few things that I don't really like. First, let's talk about ranked. Now I know you already want to type skill issue, but I did play ranked. I peaked at plat five and for me, that was overall my goal considering that I'd never played Overwatch before. But my opinion on ranked isn't really based on how I performed. If you saw previously, I posted a video explaining how me and many others believe that the rank system is kind of chalked right now. Multiple testimonies of people that are going 7-1, 7-2, 7-3, and even 7-4 in D-ranking. The worst one is when someone went 21-1 and in D-ranked. They stayed 7-0 twice and then went 7-1 once and somehow managed to drop. I even saw a content creator who goes by Rohan God who explained how he's known for climbing different rank systems. And never before has he ever seen a rank system that seems to have forced you into loss streaks as much as Overwatch has. Not only that, the games that you either lost or won were completely one-sided. Flats himself has even talked about this too, where it seems like even in some of his games where he was in top 500, it felt like it was just a blowout. They would have to sit in 20 minute queues just to play a four or five minute game of push just to get back into another 20 minute queue. It's also just so demoralizing once you go like 7-1 to 7-4, any, any 
everything in between there and spend roughly two hours of playing just to stay the same rank you really just feel like you've made no progress at least if you were getting sr and played for two or three hours you would at least see if you made some sort of progress or if you actually move backwards but the way it is right now you have just no idea and with the matchmaking the way that it is it just feels like every game is either going to be a coin toss i rarely have a game where it's like a close game or it's coming down to the final seconds it also seems like you're more likely to get teammates who just really don't know what they're doing like I myself went on like a five loss streak because I had a tank who couldn't manage to get more than 10 kills each time. And I wish I was kidding on this. It, it just for some reason blows my mind that they weren't able to do that. On top of that, they were just dying a shit ton. It just really feels like you're getting punished and not rewarded for the work and the effort that you're actually putting in yourself. Lastly, on to the balancing. Now, I'm going to be generous here and I can say that I don't think the balancing in Overwatch 2 is really that bad. And again, maybe it's because I'm coming from Apex and Seer has left a really sour taste in my mouth. If you know, you know. With that being said, it still does need some work. I find it really problematic that heroes like Sojourn manage to remain untouched for this long. I understand this is your new hero and the one that you want to push the most, but at the same time, we can't use logic stating that she's not good in lower ranks. I don't know how to tell this to them, but to be honest, nothing is good in lower ranks. Like that's kind of just how lower rank is, right? Like if, if they're in the lower rank, generally they're not gonna be as skilled. So of of course something isn't going to appear broken in lower ranks which is exactly why normally you'll balance based off of something that's happening in the higher ranks because if the higher rank players can't deal with it it's going to be even more oppressive many times than not in lower ranks in this case with sojourn it wasn't because she's dependent on her right click which is kind of a semi-skillful thing to do regardless it's kind of mind-blowing to me that she managed to last this long also with the shift of 5v5 it seems like some heroes just are not really fitting well into that play style like if you just take a look at overwatch league you'll see that the same comp was ran pretty much on every single team there was really no variance because at the highest level a lot of those heroes just are really not viable and i think if the game was balanced balance better you would have a lot more teams playing or tr at least trying to play a more nuanced team the last thing i want to talk about is the item shop now everyone i know has an issue with the item shop mainly because they believe that the skins are overpriced i'm going to take a much more controversial stance on this no pun intended i think some skins can be considered over overpriced but many of them can't. The Moira skin that was in the item shop, the Mime one, I will agree was definitely overpriced. That one was pretty much a reskin and should not be in tiered at legendary skin, maybe at most epic, because it really just was a reskin of Moira. Virtually absolutely nothing about it was different, but if we take a look at this Widowmaker skin or this Hanzo skin, I could see these going for 20 bucks. Like honestly, look at every other game that has an item shop, a cosmetic, and in many cases, one that they can't even see. Those skins are the same price. Fortnite, which is a third person shooter, has arguably better skins in, in, in my opinion. And they're skins you can actually see, so you gain some value out of it too because you can visually see the skin you're playing with. Those are still priced the same as Overwatch skins. In Overwatch, you're pretty much just getting the skin to just have swag over the person you've just shit on and there's no problem with that but i think if we're talking about the prices of skins we need to at least be a little bit fair when we're talking about if something should be priced at 20 dollars or not i will say that i do think any skin that's came out in overwatch one if it's getting released again probably shouldn't be priced at the legendary price range of 20 dollars, maybe 10 dollars. but for all the new skins i really could see the justification for it being the price of how it is I'm sure many of you will disagree with that, but that's honestly fine. This is just my take on it. As someone who's played multiple games where they already have it this way, it just seems like they're fitting the norm and the standard. Overall, I think season two is going to be an excellent season and I can't wait for it. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like on the video. And if you want to come back and see more Overwatch content, smash that sub button and I'll see you guys in the next video.